is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time to war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be the Lord, both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks, every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Frank's uh, sister Nancy is uh, living in a nursing home happily in Derry, so is unable to be here. And of course, his brother Declan, for reasons mentioned already, the sad passing of his wife Mary is unable to be with us in this celebration of thanksgiving for the life and ministry of Father Frank O'Kelly. And uh, Frank is predeceased. I had the privilege of meeting all the Kelly family, maybe briefly, but I I feel that I have known all of you. Uh, Maura, who passed away in Wisconsin some years ago, and Father Frank's brothers, Sean, uh, Seamus, and and, uh, Dennis. Father Frank took me to visit his brother, Sean, in Nazareth House in in Derry shortly before he passed away. He suffered from Parkinson's disease. Father Sean was a very famous teacher in St. Columns. I believe he refused an OBE. Is that true? Yes, respectfully refused it. That is how famous he was. And so I had, and I attended the funerals of all three, Sean, uh, Seamus, and, and Dennis with Father Frank. And I had the privilege of spending nine days 
with Maura and Dr. Jim Connolly, her husband from Belfast in Wisconsin in 1978. Frank and I were returning to our mission in the Philippines and we, we took a train journey from, from Boston to Oakland, uh, stopping off in Chicago and uh, Dr. Jim picked us up. We took the train, the Amtrak, to a place called La Crosse and he picked us up there and we had a wonderful time, a wonderful holiday with them beautiful people and we met their family. I'm sure they're with us in spirit as we celebrate the Thanksgiving Mass for Father Frank. Father Frank was an amazing man. He loved life, he loved fun, he loved the party, he loved to sing and could he sing in his younger days and one of the most beautiful songs I ever heard him sing was I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen. That's a long time ago, but my God, how he could sing. John McCormack would be in the shade. And, uh, but there was a very serious side to Father Frank, which made him a great missionary. Uh, he took his priesthood and his uh, missionary work very seriously. He was loved in every pastoral setting that where, that he was sent to. He was loved by the people. I know him so well, and I knew a lot of the people whom he served. I never heard a word of complaint uh, about Father Franco Kelly anywhere. He was much loved by the young and by the elderly, and especially by the vulnerable people in each parish, because the first thing he did in every parish was reach out and find out who, who was in need of any kind of help. Maybe material poverty, but also illness. It could be tuberculosis. It could be any, Frank would strive in every way possible to answer their needs and was successful in doing that. He had a wonderful uh, missionary journey. I remember when we returned to uh, Manila and Ulongapo, which was the capital of but not the capital, but the big city where Frank and I served in the Diocese of Iba uh, under Bishop Henry Byrne, who was very fond of Frank and also of me. And when he saw us, he said, you're a sight for sore eyes. That was a great compliment from Bishop Byrne. And uh, Frank lived, worked and lived happily uh, in the diocese uh, serving the people uh, with great, you know, with joy, but also in a very serious way. He was a great admirer of the late Father Kieran Hinehan from Knock, who died a few years ago. I preached also at Father Kieran's funeral mass in Knock on that occasion. F Father Kieran was, uh, when I arrived in 1969, I met Frank, who was assistant to Father Kieran at that time in a parish called Santa Cruz. You probably remember it from letters that you would have received, Teresa, from Father Frank at that time. That's 54 years ago. That's where our friendship began. We became uh, bosom friends, and uh, we weren't on each other's way all the time. We were very independent people in our work, but. I would consider him my best friend, and I will miss him a lot. Uh, he was a, really a wonderful person. Uh, he returned from the Philippines reluctantly and to Ireland, to the Irish region, but he didn't come home to rest. He came home to work. He was delighted that I was here in Dalgan because it helped him enormously to settle in and to be happy. He was equally delighted when he had to enter the nursing home in 2016 due to his illnesses. And uh, he was equally happy that I was there to welcome him and it, to be in support of him all, all the years since. And we've had a great journey there. But in the meantime, he was on mission uh, to the prison in Mountjoy and it was the late Jerry French who passed away last evening in the Matter Hospital who enabled Frank to 
be able to celebrate two Masses every Sunday in Mountjoy Prison. One for the men prisoners and one for the women prisoners. He would get on the bus out here dressed all in black, clerical collar, black overcoat, black hat, and the people on the bus, and when he got off the bus in Dublin, they were amazed. And he said they would ask me to bless their rosary beads, and they would ask me to pray for them, and they would be, he got to know so many people on the bus, and in Dublin itself, walking from the bus station to uh, the prison. So he had a great ministry there, and they really loved him. Because Father Frank, your fa his family will know, he was very non-threatening, and he was a very gentle presence wherever he was. And people recognized that, and the prisoners recognized that. There is a lovely uh, tribute to Frank from the from the women prisoners left here on the altar. If you don't mind, I will go over and just read what's in it. It's a little altar with the priest, and the priest looks very like Father Frank. That's where I was first. And Adriana Forero, she was the female woman prisoner who did this work of art. 2009, Dublin. Love has no end, it says. Father Frank, Philippine. Love has no end. That's the effect that Father Frank had on people, whether in prison or out of prison. They loved him. And here, the Holy Spirit. Uh, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Isn't that beautiful? From a female prisoner in an unmentioned post in Montjuic jail. I told you that this is the most precious item you have in Europe. And I hope the family be sure to take this with you. It's most beautiful work of art. Frank, may the road rise with you. May the wind be ever at your back. And may God grant you a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the relatives and friends of Frankie, especially his brother Declan and his sisters Nancy and Therese. May God fill their hearts with his comfort and consolation. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for all those whose lives are dedicated to caring for the sick, and we pray for the staff of the nursing home here in Dalgan, who cared for Frankie. May God reward their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. As we pray that Frankie will find eternal peace, we pray that that peace that is in heaven will touch the troubled parts of our world, our country, our parish, our homes, and our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, We pray for all who are ill at this time. May God lay his healing hand on them and give them courage and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for young people. May they always value goodness, kindness and friendship. May they see the beauty of the gift of human life. May they come to know God the Father's love for each and every one of them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have died, especially Frankie's parents, John and Mary, his siblings, Sean, Maura, Seamus and Dennis, and his niece, Francine 
and sister-in-law Mary, who died earlier this morning. May God unite them all in the happiness and peace of his heavenly home. We, the Dalgan community and the wider Columban family, join with you, Teresa. We remember Nancy and Declan. And we pray especially today for Mary in mourning Frankie's passing. To you and to the extended family, I offer you my sincere sympathy. There are two characteristics which come to mind whenever I think of Frankie. And firstly, he had a genuine care for the poor and the vulnerable. And this marked his ministry wherever he went, be it in the Diocese of Iba in the Philippines or in his prison ministry in Mount Joy in Dublin. Frankie showed compassion. He had empathy. And he reached out the hand of friendship to all he met. And right up to the very end of his life, he supported an orphanage in Caloocan City in the Philippines. And each month, he sent them financial support. The second characteristic that comes to mind was his love of style. As we all know, he was a dapper dresser. And I loved to meet him and tease him on how he was dressed and the clothes that he was wearing that day. His only competition around here, I think, was Podrick. <laughs> Frankie was really loved by both the staff in the house and in the nursing home. And Barney has already thanked you, but I would just like to thank you, each of you, for the love that you showed him and the care that you showed him down through the years. Before we go our separate ways, let us take our leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for, for Frankie. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Frankie in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Frankie in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith until we all meet again in Christ and you are with us and with our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Granted, our brother Frankie may sleep here in peace 
until you awaken him to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face, and in your light he will see light and know the splendor of God. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. To Almighty God, our brother Frankie, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Is born. Be there at us sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day.